Beach Blacklands. And today, today we'll be talking about the advantages of joining the military, the Air Force to be specific, because that's what I deal with. I don't know much about the other branches. They might have different advantages, but today we'll be talking about the Air Force. First of all, I would like to start with insurance is one of the advantages of joining the military, medical insurance. So once you're in the military, you don't have to think about, well, what happens to me if I'm sick and I go to the hospital and I don't have money? Well, the Air Force will pay for your medical insurance. They will not just cover the service member, but they will cover your dependents. When I say dependents, I mean your spouse and then your children. And in certain situations, they'll cover your parents too your immediate family, that is your mom and dad, none of your extended families, at least not as of now. But yeah, that is one advantage of joining the military. And number two, I would like to talk about education. Education is a big one when it comes to joining the military, especially the Air Force. So we have two programs that go hand in hand when it comes to joining the military and when you're done with basic uh, when you are in basic training you have the option to opt into one of these programs and the first one is the 9-11 bill and then the Montgomery GI bill so these are two education packages but aside those two packages that I mentioned on the other hand the Air Force provides you with what is called tuition assistance tuition assistance is an Air Force funded program where they give you I think about four thousand dollars for schooling. You can just go for your entire school based on that tuition assistance without touching your GI Bill or your 911 uh, your Montgomery or your 911 bill. You can just leave your education off tuition assistance. The good thing about that is when you use tuition assistance in the future, you can always pass your GI Bill on to your children if you so desire. Or you can use it after you've separated from the Air Force or, or you've gone to the reserve components. You still have that GI Bill option. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is, so aside your base pay, obviously you're working. The Air Force will give you a base pay. They give you food allowance and housing stipend. Now these two things, it works let me explain how it works so every month you get a basic allowance for sustenance that is your BAS it's about $360 the Air Force gives you that for food food not for you alone but for you and your dependents if that makes sense but if you were single yes you still get it anyways if you were married still get it anyways and on the other side you get a housing allowance now the housing allowance, the way it works is that, let me give an example. Say you were stationed in Fort Meade in Jessup, Maryland, right? And uh, your house, your, your place of address is located in, uh, say, Columbia. The Air Force will give you your housing stipend based on the location of Fort Meade, where the base is located not where your house is located that is one thing that people uh, mix up it is two different things the air force wouldn't give you a housing allowance if you choose to go and live in a luxurious place they'll give you an allowance based on where the base zip code is the, the zip code of the base where it is located is where they will give you a housing allowance for so it is it is up to you for you to look for an apartment that is uh, that is equivalent to what the Air Force is paying or that is lower so you can save some money if that is what you intend to do or if you get a place that is higher than what the Air Force is paying then the balance or the difference in that comes out of your own pocket the Air Force will then give you a difference for that so that is another advantage you get from joining the Air Force vacation and travel yes Advantages of joining the Air Force, you can. there is no way you can join the Air Force without traveling. In the military as a whole, you move around a lot. So if you are someone who is into traveling, you can see the Air Force as an opportunity to travel around without having to pay out of your pockets because you get stationed on different bases and then 
that is how come you move around, get to see other places, experience different cultures. On the other side, on the flip side of the vacation, so per year you get 30 days of vacation. On the civilian side, if you were working a privately owned um, job or this chain, chain jobs or whatever it is, you realize that if you are off for a certain period, because you lose those hours, you don't get paid for it. On the other side, in the military, if you are off for a certain number of days, you still get paid for it. That is what I mean by paid vacation. You get paid as long as you have leave days approved. You can be on vacation doing whatever you want and still get paid as though you were working. So that is an advantage of joining the military retirement. So in the civilian sector, we have the 401k, which is their, their retirement package. So you work and then some of your paycheck is deposited into this 401k and then when you retire, that is what you get. Now on the other side, in the, in the military, you get a retirement package after you do 20 years of honorable service. It makes a difference. You cannot just do 20 years and get a dishonorable service. I think that might affect your retirement. But 20 years with honorable service qualifies you for um, retirement. And what you can also do to help yourself for retirement is that the government, fortunately for us, has provided a TSP uh, program. TSP is the military's version of the 401k. So you have the ability to contribute towards your retirement while you are still in the military, while you are still active duty. And then what will happen is that when you retire, you can go for that TSP money in addition to whatever the government gives you for retirement. Add that together and you have a better re retirement. Not everyone does the TSP, it is not mandatory. But if you see yourself wanting to have more than just what the government will be giving you for retirement, the TSP is a good route to go. This doesn't apply to everyone, but if you are out of country, say you're trying to join the Air Force using a green card or what they call the permanent residence card, yes, you are able to join, but at the time of signing up, your jobs are limited because certain jobs are open to uh, citizens only. And it makes sense. This is not them being biased or anything. It, it just makes sense that certain jobs are open to citizens only because if they are going to give you a top secret clearance, it, it just wouldn't make sense that they take a foreigner from a different country and then just give them a top secret clearance for a, a certain job that is very sensitive. So what they do is that, yes, your jobs are limited uh, to a certain number of slots. But once you're done with basic training, you do get the opportunity to apply for a U.S. citizenship. So you apply for it and then you get your citizenship on, uh, on the day of graduation of basic training. So that is another advantage you get from joining the military. You can easily get your citizenship as compared to if you were on the civilian side. I heard you have to stay for five years before you can get the opportunity to apply for it but if you join the military within two months you can be able to get your citizenship so that is a, a fact so that is it for today guys um i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you liked it don't forget to like click smash beat the like button do whatever you want to do to it as long as uh, you change the color of that like button we're good and um subscribe guys please don't forget to subscribe so that anytime i post the videos you guys will be the first to receive it before anyone else and if you have any questions or comments don't forget to leave them down in the comment section below uh, i do i do like to actually receive comments and know what you guys expect from me and if there are any topics or questions that you guys really want me to talk about I don't mind making an entire video on it. Now, with that being said, so I'm also um, a photographer. So if I'm not doing things associated with the military, I'm doing photography because that's my greatest passion and hobby. 
So you guys can check out my page. It is Black Lens, the same spelling as you find on YouTube, on Instagram. I have my portfolio there of all the pictures I've been taking, traveling through the military. So yeah, that's it. See you guys in the next one. Have a good day.